What's happening guys? Jim the Game Guru. Let's hit up another tabletop game today. We're gonna do Sorcerer. Yes. Sorcerer from White Wizard Games. Really cool looking artwork. I mean the artwork is just sick. I mean look at that. How awesome is that? That is just so cool. Here you go. It uh, It is a game where you're trying to conquer battlefields. So you have three different battlefields, and you have a, you're each a sorcerer, and you have this grimoire, and you go to this grimoire, and you cast spells, and you put minions out in the battlefields, and you have to capture battlefields by do, dealing damage on a particular side of the battlefield. Now this is a game that you can play up to four people out of the box. I have everything that has ever been released for the game in this box. I have the three expansions that came out for it. The Egyptian boards plus an extra player board. Now I feel like this game is very, it's much more of a 1v1 game or a team based game. There is a battle royale rules that you can actually use, but it's a little weak because it's not a true battle royale or a true, a true free for all. It's more of a, you have two battlefields side by side and you're, you're battling two people that are adjacent to you. So I'm not a big fan of the, of the, ba of the uh, battle royale rules, but as far as the 1v1 and the team base, it's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna open it up, show you the components of the game, and then just do a quick high level explanation of how the game is played and with two people, okay? If you guys are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I am your video game and board game nerd. The channel's all about games. So Switch games, VR, and board games. The components on the table are gonna be player boards for each player, which are pretty, pretty sick looking. Three battlefields in the center. Typically, you're gonna have a player on one side and then the other player on the other side. Um, but for this, Demonstration purposes, I'm going to have both player mats on this side because obviously I can't be on both sides, right? Then we have a bunch of tokens here, right here that are our damage tokens and omen tokens. So they cover both purposes. On one side, they're omen, and on the other side, they're damage. So you're going to use those to kind of dictate the damage on creatures or an omen that you're going to put on your... an omen counter that you're going to put on your player board. Over here, we got some other tokens that are flame and arachnid so you got some flame there and then we have some that ha then the other side is like some kind of spiders arachnid stuff right there so it's pretty cool it's hard to see because they're, they're kind of small and tiny these, these counters uh you have two red little wooden tokens that we put on the the battles Fields. And what's going to happen is, I'll show you here, what's going to happen is this battlefield, as you can see, has 12 damage spots here and then 12 damage spots here on the other side, right? And what happens is, as the, the player sides get, take damage, they're going to use this little wooden token here to basically go along this tracker until you hit 12. Once you hit 12, then that means you've done enough damage that you can actually conquer this battlefield. The other side of the of the card is where it's it's conquered. So this shows the the battlefield all damaged, and then there's two spots here. Whoever puts the wooden token on that spot is the victor for this battlefield. Okay, so we have three here, and they're all three of them are in London. I have some other ones here. Uh, we have underground hive which is really cool. This flip side, of course, is always the damaged. It's damaged and conquered. And then we have the Egyptian ones. This is one you have to purchase separately. These are Egyptian battlefields. We have Luxor here. And then we have Giza, which has the pyramids. And then Cairo. Cairo is the other battlefield. So if you want to mix it up a little bit, you can purchase these extra battlefields and that way you don't have to play the London battlefields. 
these uh, player boards. I have six of them. I thought I had five, but I actually bought two of them. So two more. So I have actually six. I can do a 3v3 if I wanted to, team player. Uh, all right. So here on the left side, you have an energy tracker. It goes from zero all the way to 10. This energy tracker is the keeps track of your energy that you use to buy cards. Basically, it's a purchase for either a minion that you need to put on the battlefield or for a spell. Right here, this keeps track of your actions. So you, every, everyone's going to have their action reset up to here at the very top. And then as you take actions, your bead will go all the way down to zero. Right here, this is where you keep all your omens in the pentagram there, all your omen counters. Omen counters are used to re-roll a single die. Right in this spot is where we can have the fate counter. The fate counter is the first person token. It is also a token that serves the purpose of flipping it over to empty. So here is the fate counter. If you flip it over to empty, that means you use it. And when you use it, you can actually cause either player to re-roll all of their die dice when they're when they were on, like either in combat or something else here's a graveyard where you put all your cards that have been defeated or or like spells that you cast and right here is where you put your grimoire uh, which is your main deck the grimoire is composed of three things it is composed of lineage domain and your character so your character is who you are Lineage is your type of magic that you're going to be using. And your domain is going to be the place where you train and your followers. The flip side of this board is the same thing. It serves the same purpose, but it's just a little different. It has your energy tracker here, your actions here. It's all Egyptian themed, this one. And your omens, uh, your fate, and then your graveyard and your grimoire go here. Now, in the center of your player board, it tells you, it's kind of like a quick reference. It tells you what to do during the ready phase, action phase, battle phase, and the end round phase of the game. Okay. Winner is the person that wins two battlefields, any two battlefields. So you got to win two out of three. And that's why there's an odd number of battlefields, because the person that wins is going gonna, is gonna to get two out of the three. Let's go into some of the cards. I'm going to show you some of the characters here. Uh, I love the artwork on, in this game. It's very, very dark, and I like that. It's kind of like a dark, creepy kind of vibe. Okay, so this one's... I can't even say this guy's name. I have no idea. I think it's Aria Species or something. I can't, I can't pronounce that. Um, okay, so it's a cool-looking dude with a bunch of hands coming out of him. So here are some of the attachments, some spells... But yeah, you can see the artwork is very, very cool. Now you have Mazelda. These ones are actually, I love this one. That one looks so cool. The Alluring Enchantress. So some of these are minions and some of these are spells. So what you're going to have is this top left part of the card is the cost of the card. So this one says it's 9 Nine energy to play this card, this minion. The seven battle die you can roll for this particular minion. And its essence is eight. And essence is basically life on minions. So your minions have life. The number of die they can roll, their cost. This little symbol over here, there's a little symbol for an omen right here. That is basically, if you play this minion, you will get an omen counter. Down in here, it'll tell you whether or not it's a legendary or not. And this right over here tells you what deck it belongs to. Okay. So really awesome looking artwork. And Mazelda seems to have like a lot of water type of minions. Then you have Tegu, who looks like a uh, looks like a demon of some sort. And he's got like a cleaver there, which is an attachment. Uh, looks like you can get a, you can you can, you can actually weaken a creature, do a two two, yeah. Uh, some more creatures, sadistic ceremony, this sorcery. Some of these, man, but some of these cre like creatures look awesome. And then you got Neverain. And you got a bunch of, but you can see how morbid and creepy these creatures look. I mean, it's insane. Devouring Lurker. 
it's it's right along the line of like Bloodborne, the game, when I had that on my video on, on my channel earlier. That had a lot of creepy looking kind of characters. Then here you got uh, Virgilio, and then this guy, this one is actually an expansion. So this is a character you can buy from an expansion, and this this person's all about fire. You can summon phoenixes, fire blasts, ignite, a lot of cool things. Okay, so those are the characters, that one being part of the expansion. Let's go into some of the lineage. Very, very cool. So here you got the necromancer. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna split this in kind of half because it's hard to do that with. So you have the necromancer and you're, you're gonna get into like a lot of the minions for the necromancer here. Very, very, very cool. Oh, I like that council of three. That is awesome looking. That is so, so freaking cool. But yeah, it's just, I like the gruesomeness. The creepy artwork is just incredible. And then you have the animist, which is, this is like a lot of arachnid stuff, insects. And I like how like a lot of like the lineage is different. So you go from the necromancer to somebody that specializes in insects. And then you go to the ones, I think is another one's a vampire. Now, yeah, here I hear the blood lord. The blood lord is the vampire, which you have a blood pool card to keep track of special effects. And yeah, oh, nice card, bloodbath, gain four blood. Coven, oh my God, that's so cool looking. A lot of vampires in this one. Oh, and there's the one that's on the cover of the game, the box of the game. I love that particular looking character. It's the Night Veal Hunter. Super awesome. Voiceless Covenant. Dude, that is so cool. All right, let's go through some more of the other characters, uh, lineage over here, sorry. The Demonologist. Love All about demons now. Demonic ambitions. I love that. Im impulsive zealot. Innocent blood. But yeah, I mean, you, you can see the artwork is just fantastic. And then here's another one that's off the cover of the game. Mammon. When played, put two flame counters on each enemy minion. So this, so this is uh, a lineage that actually deals in flame counters. And then here you go. Here's one from an expansion. This is the Druid. The Druid is from one of the expansions. And then this one, you're going to play with special root tokens that are in that actually, I mean, I don't have them out here now, but I do have them in the box. And you play with root tokens because certain cards will actually use those root tokens. This is all Druid based, very natural looking creatures, but at the same time, grotesque. Oh, that is so cool looking. Mamuna. And then the Moon Wraith. Ooh. Kind of reminds me of The Witcher 3, the Moon Wraiths. Very, very, very cool. Holy cow. Super cool. Here, we're going to go into Domain. This is where they train, right? So here we got Screaming Coast. Again, some more minions. A lot of minions in this game. That is so wicked looking. A lot of minions in this game because the game is uses battlefields, right? And the only way you can conquer the battlefields are the damage from the minions. So, of course, there's lots and lots of minions. And then you have the Outcast Sanctuary. One of these is from the expansion. I can't remember what it is. Well, actually, when I see it, I'll probably know. Haunted Forest. That's cool looking. The Caretaker. And then we got the Forgotten Temple. Really, really neat. 
And this is the one from the expansion. It's called the Blood Soaked Fjord. Uh, this one I think is more ice based. Yeah, it's like a lot of like Yetis and stuff. I think. And uh, I guess it might just be like, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I thought there was ice. A lot of these cards have ice in the back. Very cool looking. So this is more mountain fjord like areas. It's the blood soaked fjord. Okay, so there you go. So there are the domains, and so you have lineage. You have you have the characters, and then you have the domains. You grab one of each. And you put them all together to make your grimoire. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some. I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to play with, in this example, I'm going to play with Zelda. And then I'll probably play, um, maybe I'll do Z Zev Rain. Okay, so we'll do Zev Rain with Zelda. I mean, I could do Tegu too. That's actually pretty cool. You know what? I'll do Tegu. I like him better than Zep, as far as the way he looks. He's very demonic. Okay, so there I'm gonna pick those two characters, and we'll put we'll put Mazelda over here and Tegu over here. Let's go ahead and pick up some lineage. We'll probably I'll probably do like a, well I'll do the neck the necromancer is one. So maybe I'll put him over here with Net. Uh, what are we gonna do for her? Uh, I'm not going to do anything crazy like that. And, and I'm going to do Demonologist. Why not? So she will be Demonologist. And then over here, let's find a... Let's find a... I'll do the Screaming Coast for Mazelda. And then I guess I'll do Outcast Sanctuary for Tegu. Okay. So there we go. So I'm gonna put these aside now. And now what you do is you take these cards from this deck. This is a skill card here. This is a skill card for this, for Tegu. And this one says exhaust a skill card to play a minion from your hand, paying its cost and draw two cards. Okay, so I'm gonna put the skill card aside. The other cards I put over here because they have a different back. They have the standard sorcerer back to them. And then Outcast Sanctuary for the domain, I'm gonna take this skill card and I'm gonna put this aside. So you have three skill cards per sorcerer. And then what happens is those skill cards, you can use them when you have your avatar, and I'll show you the avatars in a second, when you have your avatar in a specific battlefield, okay? So that, there's that, and then there's the Necromancer, and I'm gonna pull this skill card right here, which has a whiter background, and I'm gonna put that aside, and then I'm gonna put the rest, which has the standard sorcerer back, together with this. So there you go, see? The lineage, domain, and character deck cards go together. This is the Grimoire, okay? And we shuffle these. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and create the, both grimoires really fast and shuffle them. All right, let's take a look at some of the avatars. So each character that I showed you, the cards, have their own avatar. And as you can see right here, really cool looking avatars. And what you do is that these avatars are the ones that get placed on a battlefield when you're playing. Now, your character cannot really actually take damage. It, it's your character, your main character. The only things that can take damage in this game are your minions. Uh, and here are the other avatars, Mazelda and Tegu. So I'm gonna move these off because that's the ones we're playing with. So we're gonna put Mazelda here, Tegu, and give the fate counter over to Mazelda over here, this, per this player. All actions have been start off at six. Your energy starts off at six. And I've already shuffled both grimoires here and we're gonna draw six cards. Now there is a thing called reinforcing, which is also a way to take your minions from one battlefield and move them to another. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw six cards here. There's also a mulligan rule, and the mulligan rule states that if you, you can take, when you start off the game, you can take certain cards out of your hand that are not creatures. What you do is you show your non-creatures, your non-minions, and you can put them out 
grab a new set of cards, and then you can shuffle those cards that you, you discarded back into your grimoire. I guess they do that in case you shuffle your, in case you, uh, you end up shuffling and you draw six cards and you don't have any minions because that would be unfair because then somebody can just go buck wild on a battlefield and then all of a sudden conquer something fast. So they have that rule in place. So in case you don't have any minions really that you can actually then try to get some minions in your hands. Okay, so there's a lot of minions here. Let me go ahead and draw six over here. And then this person here has a lot of minions. Ooh, it looks like I got a sorcery spell too. So, and then the Council of Three, which I love that card. I love the way it looks. It's so awesome. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start off. Now, I'm probably gonna do probably one round. I mean, maybe I'll do two rounds, depending on how fast it goes. Um, okay, so we're gonna start off with this person that's got they got they have the fake counter, they're number one, the first player. Now on your action phase, what you can do is you can do several things. You can either channel energy, which is you gain two energy on your tracker and you can move it up. You can meditate, which will allow you to draw two cards. You can cast a spell, or you can activate a power. So you can activate a power from one of your skill cards, right? From your domain, your lineage or your character. Now in this playthrough, I'm not gonna go too much into using the character's powers. I'm just keep in mind that the characters and, and they do have their powers for wherever their avatar is in the battlefield. But for now, let's just keep in mind that we're not gonna be doing that. Um, Cause I just wanna show you how to play, how the rounds are actually played. Then there is Reinforce, which Reinforce allows you to take a minion from one battlefield and move it to another. So and the, the reason why you may want to do that is because, well, you may need to reinforce a certain area so you don't lose the battlefield. Or the battlefield may be conquered, but you have to move your forces that are left over to a different battlefield. Now, there are certain creatures that could have flying, too. And like this one right here has flying. Daughter of Heket or Hikit, I don't know how that's pronounced. This one, it looks like she's kind of like a harpy. Uh, but anyway, this one has a little icon here, which is an indicator that this minion can fly. So minions that can fly, whenever you do a reinforce, they can go from like this battlefield all the way over to this battlefield. The ones that can't fly can only move over one. Now you can either move a minion over when you reinforce or you can do an exchange. So if you had a minion here and a minion here, you could swap them. These are the dice right here. These are the battle dice. And there's seven of them. The number on the card determines how many you can roll. So this person, this minion here has three. This minion, you can only roll three of the die, the dice. Okay, this is a dice that you or die that you use for gathering energy, and you probably you may you may end up using this for other abilities too that I'm not sure of, but when you get to the the ready up phase, um, the ready phase, you actually you can actually one of the things you can do is you can roll this to gain a certain amount of energy. Okay, so this person's gonna go, and I'm gonna concentrate on one battlefield right now. I'm gonna put both avatars over here. I'm just gonna say, you know, whatever, it's, that's where they're gonna be. I'm not gonna involve the other battlefields here because I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this as a very short demo here on how to play. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? So we've got this minion here that costs one, two, three, four, two, four. Okay, so what do we got here? Um, this one you can only roll two. Uh, let's just, uh, what are we going to do? The Alluring Enchantress is good when you play her, not when she's out already. I feel like it's beneficial to hold on to her and then play her later. So let's just do Daughter, this one right here. So this one costs four energy. So I'm going to play, I'm going to go ahead and play a card. So four energy all the way down to two. Then this person, this minion comes out into this battlefield right here. Let me go ahead and move this here. Okay, you can have a maximum of four minions per battlefield. That's it. 
You cannot have more. Unless you're playing multiplayer roles and you're doing a team-based game, in which case then you can, you can have up to six in a battlefield. So this person's done. Their energy went from six all the way down to two. And then this action token goes down by one. Okay. Now this person's going to go. What are they going to do? Uh, okay, so they see that this person only has a defense of two. Ooh, look at this. We're gonna we're gonna play uh, Sekhmet's champion, which has a you know, rolls five dice, and he's got three four health. So this costs four to bring out. So one so four so this one goes all down to two, and then that. Champion comes out. This one did have, it, it had an omen as well, an omen counter, which means that this person gets an omen counter. Oh, and by the way, you start off with one omen counter in your pentagram already. So this person gets another one. All right, and they're done. So we move this down. Now, the cool thing about this game is you're, it's like the calm before the storm. And what you're doing is you're preparing your forces in the battlefield before you get to the battle phase. And I absolutely love that. It's not something that is like kind of ongoing and you can keep track of as you go. It's something that you need to prepare and then when you're when you're all, when you're ready and you get to the to the battle then that's when everything breaks loose. Ooh, is that a legend? That guy? No, he's not a legend. Okay, so what this person's gonna do, I think they're gonna go ahead and channel energy. So I'm gonna move my action counter down one and channel two energy to go back up to four. Now this person's gonna go. Now what they're going to do is, um, you know what, they're probably just gonna bring this one out here. So they're gonna, they're gonna play another card. They're gonna play Doomed Spirit Keeper. When this is destroyed, they gain two energy. So we put them on their side of the battlefield. So now we've got two minions over there. Now this, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go, and I think this person's gonna play pay three from four to one and play the Alluring Enchantress. The nice thing about this is when it's played, you exhaust a non-legend -le enemy minion. So I'm gonna exhaust this guy right here. So wow, that is exhausted, which means that they cannot battle because when you battle in the battle phase, you have to exhaust a minion first, and then you can do your. Uh, then you can go ahead and play out all the tactics, actions, and roll the die for battle. So that's kind of crazy. All right, so we're down to four cards. Let's see what do we do here? So did what? Did one, two. Oh, this I already. That one should be down there. I don't think I moved that. So now this is down to here, right? Because we did that. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything when you're trying to record the video and keep track of everything that's going on. So I only have one energy here. So what am I going to do? Uh, play a menu with essence two or greater from your hand. Pains cost, weaken it. Uh, nope, we're not going to do that one. So let's go ahead and this one's going to go ahead and channel energy. We're going to go ahead and go back up to three. This goes down one more. So now this person's gonna go, what are they gonna do? So we got a choice, we can either meditate and get two more cards, or we can cast another spell, but there's only one energy here, um, or we can activate a power, and I'm not really gonna focus on activating powers, this how to. Ooh, wow. All right, so this one right here, Deep Madness, okay? Deep Madness, if I play this, Mm -hmm. On an enemy's minion, it makes the minion's text box is blank, which means there's nothing there. This ability cannot be blanked. Weaken the attached minion. Hoo, 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 hoo. Okay, so I'm going to spend one to put it on this doomed spirit keeper over here. And now what happens, and that in essence basically destroys this creature because the doomed spirit keeper only has one essence. And I've actually put, cast this spell on it, which gives it two damage because it's weakening it. And it essentially kills this creature. So this goes into my discard here, my graveyard, they call it. And this goes in the graveyard over here. Okay. And that is done. So move the counter down. So now we're going to go with this person. What are we going to do here? So 
wow, we need some kind of creatures out to defend a little bit here. Okay, what are we gonna do? Um, you know what maybe we'll do is we'll bring out the next doomed spirit keeper in my hand. So this will come back out like that. And then this, enter, this action thing goes back down. So now this person goes. There's two more actions to go before we're ready for the battle, okay? Uh, what do we have? We have zero energy here. Boom. So we're going to go ahead and channel energy. It goes back up to two. And that action is done. And now we're going to go over here. This person has two energy. What are we going to do? Uh, we're probably... We might do the council of three. I don't know. Yeah, let's do, let's do council of three. So we'll spend the two. We'll put the council of three. This says when played... You may search your grimoire, shuffle afterwards for up to three cards and put them in your graveyard. But I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a benefit to that because there's probably cards that you can use in your graveyard that have special abilities. But I, I'm, I'm sure what's happening is there's cards in here that you can play from your graveyard. And that's probably why they have that, which is really cool. You don't find that in a lot of games. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Um... I'm gonna go ahead and cast this Featherless Martyr. I'm gonna spend two. This action goes down to zero. So now we have three minions right there on this playing, this battlefield. Now this person's gonna go, they have one more action left. So what are we gonna do? So the minions here are not looking too good. Uh, we got Sadistic Ceremony, but I can't really do anything with that. So what I'm, what I'm probably gonna do with this person is probably just do an energy gain of two. Because I think that was down at zero, so that's it. So now all the actions have been exhausted, and now we go to the battlefield. Now the rules state that the first player that has a first player token, which is the fate counter, attacks first in the center of battlefield. On the flank, the ones that attack first are the are the the person the person that doesn't that is not first. Okay, so over here that means that this person gets to attack first. Okay, so and just because this one this minion here is exhausted, it doesn't mean that this person over here can't put damage to this minion. They could do that once the other person attacks. All right, so this person is going to go ahead and attack with the Doom Spirit Keeper. That Doom Spirit Keeper says they can only roll two die. So let's go ahead and roll the two die. One's a miss and one's a damage. Anytime you have um, anytime you have a somebody hit one of these crits, the attacking player can assign the damage. The defending player assigns the damage for all of the non-crit damage stuff. Okay, so this was an empty. I don't like that. So this person's gonna go ahead and spend their omen token. And I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll this because there we go. And that actually worked out pretty good. So now the roll here has given me trip damage. So I have trip damage coming from this one minion, and this is exhausted because this is the one that I'm attacking with. So now this person over here gets to choose where they want the damage to be allocated. Okay, so they obviously don't want all that damage to come through and hit their side. So what they're going to do is they're going to choose to put it on certain creatures. So what I'll probably do is probably put one on, so it's what, three damage? Ooh, man, this Alluring Enchantress only has one essence, which is painful. Um, so I'll put one here on, on, on this featherless martyr, and then we're going to put one on this daughter. And then I guess I'll put another one on this featherless martyr because the daughter only has two. If I put two on her, she dies. All right. So I've, ass I, I've assigned two damage to that. So that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and attack with one of these. I'm going to attack with the alluring enchantress that allows me to Roll three of the dice, okay? So I'm gonna roll three of the dice. Ooh, okay, so we got three damage. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spend an omen token and roll the other one. Hey, a crit, look at that. So this is what we have. Player one rolled a crit and three damage. So now we're gonna go ahead. So since they're at since they're attacking and they rolled the crit damage, 
then what happens is I can assign one damage on wherever I want, on a creature of theirs or on their battlefield, their side of the battlefield. But this person over here is gonna be like, nah, eh, eh, eh. not so fast. I'm gonna go ahead and spend an omen token. And now you're gonna reroll this die. Okay, let's reroll the die. Ooh, now we have double damage. So double damage, so now there's f five damage. And now this person up here gets to choose where the five damage goes. So they're gonna go ahead and say, okay, you know what? I'll put one on this champion. I will put one on, I guess the council. I'm gonna put one on this and destroy this. Because when this is destroyed, you gain two energy. Oh, and by the way, I forgot about when that earlier Spirit Keeper got destroyed. I forgot to actually go two energy up. So this person actually has four more energy because I forgot to increment that. Okay, and so that was what? One, two, three. So now we need to assign two more, which is not good. Uh, wow, that is not good. Okay, so we're probably gonna go ahead and have to sign one more. Ooh, to the council of three, I guess. That's gonna kill them. Okay, so that was what? One, two, three, four. I need to guess sign one more damage. So one more damage, I'm gonna put it on right here on that champion, okay? I'm trying to get no damage on this side. So now we're gonna go ahead and exhaust this one. And I'm gonna attack with the Featherless Martyr that can only roll two die. A miss and a crit, but you know what? I'm gonna use my fate counter and switch that to empty, okay? And now I get to roll all the die again. And I get a damage and an, a miss. So that was worse than my original. The reason why I did that there is because I wanted to show you guys that to remember to use your fate counter because when you don't use this fate counter, what happens is you can miss an opportunity to use it because this, face, this fate counter at the end of the round is gonna go to this other player over here. So you gotta remember that this is a one-time shot during while you have it. Okay, so it's one damage. So the one damage, the defending player gets to choose where they wanna put it. So they're probably just gonna put it on the battlefield on their side. So now this battlefield over here is one damage, okay? Now this next person's gonna go, they're gonna go ahead and attack with the daughter of Hecate. I can never say that. I don't know if it's Hecate, Heset, or whatever it is. They get to roll three die. Nothing else, there's no more omen, no, there's no more omen counters or fate counters that I could use to re-roll. Two damage, now the defender gets to choose where those two damage go. Um, you know what, he'll probably just put one on here on his champion and nuke it, okay? That is just the way it is. And then they're gonna, he's gonna put the other one on the battlefield, he's got no choice. So now that, that, that person's side of the battlefield has two damage. This person here has no damage yet, and that's why this token, this wooden token is in the middle. Once I start to assign damage, then we're good. So now that is the end of the battle phase, and now what we do is we go ahead and go to the uh, end of round phase. So now we're in the end of round phase, and then in, in the end of round phase, we resolve any abilities on any of the cards that require end of round. And you'll see on the card, it'll say end of round, it, it does X, Y, Z. So we don't have any of those out in play right now. So then we go from the end of round phase to the ready phase for the next round. So, so, the, so the first person, so this person gets the fate counter now. So it goes from here to here and it's full for that person to use. Then you ready all exhausted cards in play. These minions still have damage on them, right? So all in all, that person came out pretty uh, pretty good, only having two damage in their battlefield when considering what they had to deal with there. Okay, and then the, the then what we can do is that this person can either has two choices for this next round. We can roll a die and everybody gets that amount of energy or everyone gets four energy. So you have to choose, roll die or four energy. But you know what? This person over here has like zero energy. So this person's not gonna wanna give this person for energy for free. So I'm gonna roll this die, hoping that it's a low number or something like one. 
Wow. Is that a six or a nine? It's a six, right? Yeah, it's a six. Okay. Well, that didn't work out very well. So this goes up to, this goes up to the max energy you can get is 10. So this person goes all the way up to six. They actually got helped out on it. Now it would have been really, really bad if it was if it was like a one. Because if it was a one, this person would have been screwed over here because they would have to spend some action points to meditate or, or to, to gain energy. Uh, all right, so your action markers go all the way back up to the top, those reset. Now the one thing you'll notice is your cards do not reset. So your cards that you have in your hand, are they are the way they are. The only way you can get more cards is to meditate, okay? Is to meditate. Um, let me see something here, yep. Okay, I was just checking out some of the other cards that I went to the graveyard to make sure nothing was messed up. These players are probably, in this next round, gonna start meditating. And then everything starts over again. So now we're on the next round. This person goes first, right? So they're going to go ahead and put their action counter down to one or reduce it by one. They're going to meditate probably. Grab two cards, get another council of three, get another doomed spirit keeper. So there you go. This person over here might do the same thing. Yep, they'll go ahead and spend one to go ahead and meditate. And they've got some cool minions that came up as well in their hand. And then you keep going. You you either play a minion in another battlefield, or you play a sorcery spell, or you play an ability, or you can channel energy to gain more energy, or you can meditate to draw more cards, or you can reinforce. If I want to reinforce, I can take some of these minions here and go to another battlefield. So in this, in this how-to, I basically only focused on the one battlefield because I was just trying to limit it so I can show you guys how it's played. But in reality, would all of the minions have gone to one battlefield? Probably not. Like they, 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 I probably would have put one powerful one here and maybe two smaller ones over here or something. Um, and I probably would have started off with this battlefield when, the, when, this, when this person was first player so that way I could have the advantage of attacking first. But yeah, it's, it's a cool game, man. It's a cool game. I love the, the, strat the, the, the actual mechanics in it. I like the, st the strategy in it. I love how you can mix three different pieces into one grimoire, and then that is like what you're using. So it allows for to have replay, like replayability. And that is just absolutely fantastic um, be because you might be a necromancer one time and then next time you'll you'll be somebody dealing with spider powers and the next time you might be a vampire and then you just switch it up with different characters so there's always a way to mix it up which is which is fantastic and there's a lot of counters in this game they give you a lot of counters which is crazy yeah love the artwork i love the player boards they look really really awesome and the game the game is cool my if my if my if i had one one really negative critique about this game is that the battle royale free for all sucks um i don't i really don't i wish that was implemented better but this is more of a of a 1v1 or team based battling game rather than a free for all so if you if you're if you're thinking about a free for all game this is not the game for you so let me go into the manual really quick because the manual is very very good quality here you have your table of contents um, it tells you what's in the box. It tells you uh, the game contents in there, your, your, your character decks, your lineage decks, your domain decks. The quality of this book is fantastic. And then it goes into two player rules. So it has two player rules. It tells you how you go ahead and set up the board and, and use your mechanics. And it, and it shows how a two player game is, is, is fought. And this game is primarily, like I said earlier, it's a primarily a 1v1 style game or a team versus game. And it tells you, it goes into like battle terms. I and mean, there's a lot, a lot of terms in this game. Things like unopposed, weaken, distribute, destroy, everything you can think of in the game, it covers. And then eventually it'll tell you about the different type of lineage and then it'll go into multiplayer rules where it tells you how to set up the battle royale or the team-based game. You do have to buy, depending on how many players you, you end up 
getting in this game uh, that you want to play in this game you will have to buy another copper copy of sorcerer if you get into the high number of players i feel realistically i feel like maybe the max you want to go is six players so that way you, you can do a three versus three type of game Ma I'll, I'll definitely max out at six i wouldn't go beyond that and the boards are really easy to find on Amazon if you want to buy them. That's that's, I mean, that's what I did. I found the, the extra boards on Amazon and ordered two more. But that's it. This is Sorcerer. It's from White Wizard Games. A uh, really cool game about battling and uh, in a choir and, and dominating on a battlefield. And the winner that takes two out of the three battlefields wins. All right. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.